Good day to uh, my fellow volunteers at ISP. My name is Bill Lynch. I'm the proud chair of the ISP Board of Directors. And today, I really, my purpose is to say thank you for all the work you've done that you will do. Um, I, as a volunteer, have been part of it for four years. I've been to the retreats. I've been on many missions and seen people in action. It's just something that God knows we really need the work that's being done by each of you. So thank you, first of all. Um, secondly, um, as 2021 begins, we have new leadership with Chris Kern as our new executive director of all of her talent and her drive and ambition. She really creates her legacy. And, you know, ISP weathered 2021 in a very strong, powerful way to continue to put our work forward, to use technology, and to try and make the best of what we could do without live meetings. But they are coming back soon, and we can't wait till that happens, and to try and be innovative and thoughtful as we move forward as well. And I think the other thing that everybody needs to know is that ISP, the future is really bright. Um, we're adding staff. We're putting more people out in the field. We've had a strategic plan that we're putting forth because we know that what we do is needed, that we're behind the work of God to help those individuals out there that really have a sense of need. Financially, it's strong. We have a great endowment and many, many people who care about this mission that Bill Creed had the vision for 20 plus years ago. And then really a, a huge thanks for all the work you've done and you will do over the course of the next few weeks. And I look forward to being a part of it, doing everything I can to make ISP very vibrant and dynamic in the future. Have a great conference. Bye-bye. Greetings, ISP community. My name is Christine Curran, ISP's new executive director. There is no doubt this has been a very difficult year for all of us. The pandemic has upended our lives in ways we couldn't ever have imagined, impacting us personally, our ISP ministry, and especially the lives of those we serve. Despite these challenges, I wanna say how proud I am of our ISP volunteers and staff for being able to find creative ways to continue our ministry during this time. Despite, in many ways, how well we've done, I was very glad to announce a couple weeks ago that ISP will be resuming in-person spiritual reflection programs on April 1st and overnight retreats on August 1st. As we move forward, regional coordinators will work with you to put a plan together for how and when you can safely reopen your programs, depending on your circumstances. We will also be providing guidelines and protocols to help keep our community safe. Please don't hesitate to reach out to regional coordinators for more information. Just wanted to take a few minutes now to update you on some of the things happening at the ISP network level. Despite the relative quiet in our programs, this is actually an exciting time of real growth and transition at the ISP network office. These past few months have provided an opportunity for us to continue the strategic planning work that we began well over a year ago, but that was initially put on hold due to COVID. This process, as you may remember, engaged volunteers from across our network, as well as other ISP stakeholders and partners via surveys and phone calls. We are so appreciative of this feedback and we received quite a bit, the response was great. Our board and staff took all of what was shared into careful discernment and created priorities based on what we heard. This process produced a strategic vision that will inform our forthcoming strategic plan this fall and help guide our ministry in the years to come. Regional coordinators shared this vision with teams in our fall and winter site visits, which I'll share again with you now. In the next five years, ISP will become a sustainable ministry that is invested in building inclusive communities. We will prioritize the deepening of our relationships with participants, volunteers, and community partners in order to more effectively create spaces for people to encounter God's love, hope, and healing. I wanna quickly highlight three key points of this new strategic vision, sustainability, inclusivity, and deepening relationships. Inclusivity has been an important growing edge for our ministry as we continue to find ways to empower alumni into leadership roles. We've made good progress in this goal with the recent release of our new ISP Journey mobile app, the Ambassadors of Hope program, the Network Facilitators Retreat, and our local witness training program. On an organizational level, the ISP staff and board have begun to take a hard look 
at our ministry with respect to race, equity, and inclusion. Our staff and board are currently active in training to educate and prepare ourselves to engage volunteer teams to come. This work will continue to be a priority as we seek to find ways to ensure that our leadership adequately reflects the diverse backgrounds, experiences, and gifts of those we serve. The second key part of this vision is to deepen relationships in the cities and communities in which we serve. Rather than focusing on expanding to new cities as we had for many years, this means prioritizing support and formation of our volunteer teams and especially building and now rebuilding in the wake of COVID our relationships with partner residences, anchor institutions, and other community partners in our local ISP affiliates. We saw clearly during the pandemic on a network perspective, how teams with the strongest relationships were able to continue their outreach while others that were only active once or twice a year for retreats quickly faded when in-person programs were suspended. We believe that building these local community partnerships and connections and growing and strengthening our teams will ultimately provide the roots that our programs need to grow and thrive in the years to come. Finally, sustainability. We understand that volunteers cannot be expected to do all of this work. In fact, the one thing we heard most from volunteers in our surveys during the strategic plan was the amount of work that was required on the local level, especially in administrative and fundraising responsibilities was quickly becoming unsustainable. Many of you who were attracted to ISP's spiritual and pastoral work were finding that you were spending way too much time and energy trying to keep up with this work as your programs grew. This certainly came through loud and clear in the surveys. So today I'm glad to announce that the ISP network will be making significant investment in program and fundraising staff in the year to come. If we are to grow and thrive, we know we need to better support and resource our programs on the ground. Our hope is making a significant investment in program and fundraising staff will allow ISP to reach more people, increase our impact, and ultimately provide a more sustainable way forward for our ministry. Our new Director of Advancement, Hazel Coleman, will begin with us next month and will be working from her home in Nashville, Tennessee. This is a new position which will focus on advancement strategy, major gift work, and creating a planned giving program. Our current Director of Development, Catherine Ruffing Drotliff, will become our new Director of Mission and Communications and will work from her new home in Cleveland, Ohio. This July, we plan to hire three regional directors, program staff who will assume increased program and fundraising responsibility. The following July 2022, we'll hire a fourth regional director for a total of five regional directors on the program staff. Each regional director will be responsible for fewer cities, approximately five rather than 10, and have increased program and fundraising responsibilities to allow for more comprehensive support on the local level. There will be much more on this to come, but I did want to share this exciting news. At a time when many organizations are shrinking or pulling back, ISP is moving forward and investing in our ministry with a solid plan in place that will help us achieve the next stage of organizational growth. We want to assure you that the core of our mission and ministry remains the same and that we look forward to the day when we can be together again in person. Thank you for staying on the journey with us through this very difficult year. We are very grateful. Please keep watching for Matt on programs and Catherine on development and communications. Thanks again. It's been about a year since ISP made the decision to cancel in-person programs. And even though that was a difficult decision, it's been the right decision for the safety and well-being of our participants and volunteers. It's been a decision that's helped ISP grow in innovative ways. 
ways that strengthen our ministry, deepen our relationships, and expand our programmatic offerings in individual cities and the broader network for years to come. We started new initiatives like Gathering in the Spirit, a weekly opportunity for volunteers across the network to gather, pray, and grow with one another in our common mission. We've launched ISP Journey, a mobile application for volunteers and alumni participants that invites us to deepen our relationship with the God of our understanding through individual and shared reflection. And in January, we offered our first Sabbath retreat, a virtual retreat for volunteers and board members to take a step back, reflect, and rejuvenate themselves as we begin a new year together. As we slowly move towards reopening in-person programs, we will embrace these initiatives as we focus on rebuilding relationships with social service agencies, retreat centers, and with one another. As Christine noted, on April 1st, volunteers can begin offering short, one-hour, in-person spiritual accompaniment programs at local shelters and partner agencies. Beginning August 1st, volunteers can resume offering overnight retreats. In the weeks and months to come, we will be in touch with you about specific guidelines for reopening these programs. Jan, Steve, and I will also be in touch with volunteers and coordinators to facilitate a reopening retreat or formation experience for your team in the fall, build budgets for the upcoming program year, and encourage you to consider nominating people for the Ambassadors of Hope program. Finally, on behalf of the program team, I want to say thank you. Thank you for your dedication and support, especially during this last year. You've been a joy for Jan, Steve, and I to walk with, and we couldn't do this without you. Hi everyone, it's Catherine Ruffin Gottlieb, Director of Development at ISP. Miss being together with everyone this weekend at the NLC, but I'm grateful for the ways we can gather virtually until we can be in the same room again. Um, so it's been a hard year. This is not uh, news to anyone, um, but the good news is that ISP is doing really well uh, fundraising and financially. Uh, it's been really hard, of course, to not be having in-person programming, um, having retreats, and being able to fundraise around those activities. Um, have seen some minor dips in a few areas of our funding, but um, by and large, our supporters have stuck with us and are really helping us to weather this crisis. Um, it's great to see so many old and new faces at the Company of Grace last fall. Um, it was a really successful event that we're trying to figure out how to incorporate into our um, calendar year, um, even post-COVID, to have some kind of network virtual event, um, fundraising or otherwise, to be able to gather together and experience that camaraderie. So stay tuned for more information on that. And again, thanks to so many of you who joined us last fall. So as many of you know, I've been um, working in development and communications at ISP um, for over seven years. And so um, we really acknowledge the need to prioritize um, communications and to really invest in our development side as well. As we look to the future and our vision for ISP, um, everyone agrees that the time has come to invest in staff and to be able to um, not only increase our capacity at the fundraising level, um, but also to be able to prioritize communications. Um, so to that end, I'm thrilled to welcome Hazel Coleman, who will be our new Director of Advancement. She's starting with us in the middle of March. Hazel brings a wealth of experience. She's right now finishing her Master's of Divinity at Duke University. Um, she's got lots of years in advancement in fundraising, a lot of major gift experience, which is what we were, one thing we really were looking for. Um, it really just brings up great new energy. Um, and she'll be able to kind of work on the vision for, for our fundraising efforts, um, as well as just bring some really great expertise. Um, so thrilled to have her aboard, and with her coming on, it means I'll be able to transition over to a new role as Director of Communications, um, working really closely with Hazel and her team, with our program team, with Christine, um, just to be able to um, really communicate our, um, our mission, our, tell our story, and work on and um, you know, develop and execute on those internal and external communication strategies. Um, so that transition will take some time, of course. Um, we'll be working really closely with Hazel and with Christine Holt, who's our development associate um, during this time as, as she gets up and running. And so we won't be going anywhere. And I'll be um, you know, working closely until you know, the, the team picks up some steam and is able to um, allow me the chance to kind of move into, into communications full time. 
Um, so what about fundraising right now, this spring? Um, so the good news, more good news is that with the vaccine rollout really um, picking up, um, we can look with some real momentum towards holding um, our, our programs um, soon, you know, this year, this calendar year. Um, and so with that comes momentum for fundraising from both volunteers and donors, um, which is exciting. So as we gradually ramp back up our programming and gradually ramp back up our local fundraising, um, we're putting together a few options that um, might work for you all to be doing some fundraising in your cities. And we'll be um, in touch with you in the next couple of weeks, just some of what some of those options might be and talk with you about um, what might be possible where you are. And as always, work really closely with you and get you the tools you need um, to plan and execute on some of those activities. So stay tuned for more on that. Uh, thank you so much for your commitment to ISP and our mission. Um, we say it regularly, but only because it's true that ISP wouldn't exist without our volunteers and the work that you all do um, and your commitment to uh, transformation and hope and healing. So thank you so much and enjoy the rest of the conference.